Magadang umaga. Magadang umaga. You didn't know that? Man, what's with this? In the Manila, Manila in the Philippines, that's how they say it in Tagalog. Magadang umaga. I've been to the Philippines just a couple of times in my life. Let's see, three maybe. And uh, I love the Filipino people, Filipino food, uh, the pancet, crispy pata, not good for you, but it tastes good. And then balut. I once went there to speak, and because of the time change, I went early by one extra day to speak for the Samaritan's Purse at a big event in Manila. I got there early because it's like a 12 hour time difference. I, I had to get over that so I could be alert. So I get there a whole day early. I'm gonna get established in my time, stay up there in the day, go to bed at night to, you know. So I have lunch by myself in the hotel where the event was gonna be at. And I come up to my room and I sit in a chair and I have my New Testament and I'm reading it, my Bible, whatever. And it's like two o'clock. And it's, it's um, tw two o'clock in the morning, my body time. So I'm there, but I'm, you know, I'm fighting it. And then suddenly the bed started to speak to me. Did that ever happen to you? And the bed was like, yo, come over. Let's talk. No, I'm not doing that. I did okay. You know what? I'm going to lay down on the bed, dress, but I'm going to keep my Bible there and I'm going to read. But I get a more relaxed position. I remember, I'm guessing here, I remember something like 20 after 2 or 2 o'clock, 5 after. I remember putting it down and going off. I saw the clock. I woke up 10 to 11 at night. There you go. Now, what do you think I was going to do from 10 to 11 in the morning? <laughs> yeah. Wide awake, boy, I do bad on time changes. Here's what I do good at, reading the book of Mark. He summoned the 12, Mark 6, verse 7, and he began to send them out in pairs and gave them authority over unclean spirits. He instructed them to take nothing for the road except a staff, no bread, no traveling bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not put on an extra shirt. So this is interesting now. Sent out the 12 in pairs. Better that you're not alone. You're traveling with someone. Iron sharpens iron. People encourage one another. And they're a good uh, uh, kind of watch over one another. Be prayer partners. Sent them out two by two. He could have got more places covered. All 12 going out individually. No. Sent them out in six pairs of two. Now, the Old Testament does not apply to us unless it's found reiterated, repeated, and illustrated in the New Testament, okay? We don't kill rebellious children. I know that thought has risen in some parents' minds, but no, don't do it. So then you have the New Testament, the epistles, the book of Acts. Now, in the Gospels, there's almost, in many cases, a transition uh, time where these are to be read in the light of the rest of the New Testament because some of the commands of Jesus were only for them, not moral, but the commands and instructions like this. He sent them out, take nothing for the road. They're going out on a ministry trip. Nothing except a staff. No bread, no traveling bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not put on extra shirts. No one has ever literally obeyed that, except them at that time. When the late Billy Graham or all the great evangelists and preachers and pastors go out on mission trip, nobody says, no, I, listen, no suitcase, no traveling bag. What do you, that's what this says. No bread. Get those snicker bars out of your, your, your carry-on. No money in their belts. Get that wallet out to wear sandals, not put on an extra shirt. 
So a lot of people who are literalists and don't get context and compare scripture with scripture can get hung up on that. That is not for us today, obviously. In the book of Acts, Paul traveled. He didn't obey that. So just pointing that out. He sent them out and he gave them authority over unclean spirits. Jesus gave authority to 12 disciples. The mysterious part about that is one of them was Judas. Judas cast demons out of people. Didn't end up too well, though, did he? Mystery to me. Um, he gave them authority over unclean spirits and all the devices of the enemy. They could overcome it. He said to them, whenever you enter a house, stay there until you leave that place. See, traveling ministers historically have gone, yes, to homes, but also to hotels. If any place does not welcome you or listen to you, when you leave there, don't argue, don't fight. When you leave there, shake the dust off for your feet, off your feet as a testimony against them. So these are the instructions Jesus gave those disciples. Notice they weren't to force themselves or stay and fight with anyone. They were taught when it gets bad, move on. If someone doesn't receive you, move on. If someone does receive you, leave a blessing on that home. The lesson here for us today is let's sow seed, let's witness, let's tell people about Jesus. The minute it gets argumentative, ta-ta, bye-bye, night-night. God does not want us fighting with people who are not open. Don't cast pearls before swine, Jesus said. And some people have a swinish attitude, not calling them swine, but they have that uh, very uh, strong aversion to listening to anything you have to say about the Lord. Move on. Don't argue. Don't fight. But he's given us authority over evil spirits, and we can go out and tell people the good news of Jesus. Some might say, get out of my face. Others might say, tell me more. More and more about Jesus. Blessings on you today. See you next time. Thank you.